on a good wicket. You are in his good books. You listen to his commandments. He says, you shall worship none but me. But he said, no, 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 I'll worship you through this man or through this monkey or through this elephant. He said, look, I don't want it. I want you to worship me and me alone. But he said, no, 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 no. You see, this thing helps me. This makes it easy for me. God says, I don't want it. So in other words, in Islam, you believe in God and carry out his commandments. And if you have made a mistake, you repent. Repent means you turn back from whatever you have done. And this is exactly what the Bible is teaching. In the book of Ezekiel, we are told, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Whoever sins, he will perish. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever the good thing the good man does, he will get the benefit. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn, repent, come back from all the sin that he has committed, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That is Islam. Same. There is no change. In the laws of God there is no change. You must pay for your sins, I pay for mine. Nobody can pay for your sins. And nobody dies for your sins. And Christ didn't die for anybody's sins. He didn't die. Thank you, Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Dedan. Uh, I know nothing about the Quran. All I wanted to know was does the Quran have, a, have the epic of creation when, when the Lord God created heaven and earth like Genesis or not? There are so many things which are common between the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims. This, the Bible speaks about God creating the heavens and the earth in six days. The Quran says God Almighty created the heavens and the earth and all between in six days. Right. So there is a common denominator between what the Jews believe, the Christian believes and the Muslim believes. But it doesn't go right through and through. You see, it doesn't. The concept that is given about God, the Quran doesn't confirm. That when Adam and Eve, when they act of that forbidden fruit, they became aware of their nakedness. And they heard the footsteps of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. You know, like a mighty big giant, boom, boom like mighty King Kong, walking in the, cool, in the garden in the cool of the day. So Adam went and hid himself away in the bushes. I'm giving you reference from the Bible, book of Genesis. He hid himself away in the bushes. So God comes and stands where Adam was a few seconds before, and he scans, and he asks, he shouts, he says, Adam, Adam, where art thou? Creates the impression that God didn't know where Adam and Eve were. Or he was playing hide and seek with Adam and Eve. Adam, Adam, where art thou? So Adam peeps through the bushes and he says, I'm here. He said, why are you behaving like this? He said, no, I'm naked. He said, how do you know that you're naked? You were not supposed to know. So, he says, you see, you have been eating of the fruit. So Adam says, it's a woman that thou gave us to me, she made me to eat. And you woman, she said, it is the serpent that beguiled me. Now all that thing is not in the Quran, it's not in Islam. This is all in the Bible. Thank you. as alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I mean, uh, Mr. Didad, just to Suraj mentioned uh, two things, one about fasting, about Muslim people who um, we fast and they made a mockery of it. Could you clarify that as well, please? And uh, let's take one question, Mr. Sal. Please read out that first question again slowly. Basically, it's, I can't remember exactly what Dr. Suraj said, but he was making a mockery about fasting. We Muslim fast, but as he as he entered, he said he used to fast. He was fasting and praying himself. So I just want to all the Christian brothers to know that Muslim people we we fast. I could be partially. What was that? The whole thing? We having difficulty. You saw that like Ramadan thing on the stage. Oh, well, Doctor Saraj actually. Yes, Doctor Shiroz. Yes. 
actually stated that uh, it was insulting Muslim people about Ramzan, Ramadan, that we fast, yes? But as he entered the stage, he himself said that he fast and he was praying. So he basically contradicting what you're saying. I just wanted all the other brothers to know that. And your question is? This is just to clarify the people about fasting. Yes, so where do I fit in now? I think what Dr. Shorosh was trying to insinuate was that the Muslims they fast but at the end of the day they gorge themselves. So what is the value of fasting? That, is, that was his criticism. I don't think it was to say that we shouldn't fast because Jesus Christ told his disciples that when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do. They don't wash their faces, they don't brush their hair. You see, with unkempt hair, milk muck in their eyes. And if you meet one of those guys in the flesh, he said, what's wrong uncle? He said, no, I'm fasting. He said, no, you don't do like that. You wash your face and you brush your hair. Nobody knows that you're fasting, but you must fast on a higher level. We Muslims are also supposed to do the same. But not to gorge ourselves to the extent that some of us, human weakness, we do. But they do fulfill things which the Christians don't do at all. Yes, sir. Mr. Didat, you've been telling us. Sorry, yes. Mr. Didat, you've been telling in your speech today about the contradictions of the Bible. That's very good. Secondly, you were saying about the fact that the Bible hasn't lived up to its contents. That's fine as well. That's one side of the story. But can you scientifically show some facts from the Quran, from the Quran, to show? that the Qur'an is a revelation from God, re revelation from God, please. That would be ideal for the Muslims and the non-Muslim brothers. Yes. You see, there are so many things in the Qur'an which lends itself to scientific discoveries and proving of creation. For example, you see, if you meet one of these young men or learned people, those who say that there is no God. It's one of the answers to the previous question. Huh? Now it depends on the type of person that you are meeting, you can use the type of facts that you have at your disposal. You meet a man of learning, a doctor, a professor of astronomy, biology or whatever, and yet he says that there is no God. And when you ask him, according to his learning, the origin of this universe. How did this universe come into being? And that person will postulate, he's going to start explaining to you that you see millions and millions of years ago, billions of years ago, this universe was one piece. And there was a big bang. And out of that big bang, that explosion, this universe came into being and things started moving in space and they have been ever since moving at a regular pace. So that type of a person, we might ask, he said, now, where did you get this idea from? When did you learn this about the Big Bang? He said, no, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. 50 years is only like yesterday. So he discovered that there was a big bang according to our astronomers, according to our physicists, and out of that this universe came into being. So he said, you see, an illiterate man in the desert, 1400 years ago, he couldn't have known that, could he? So he says, no, never. So he says, well, listen, now we quote the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, Awalam yara lazina kafaru. Do not the unbelievers see these atheists, these agnostics, those who say that there is no God, can't they 